verse 21, lifts out the cord to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. For his compassion fails not. His mercies is anew every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Thank God for the mercies. God, but we don't deserve it. same time. He's a God that expects justice. Amen. Thank God for one more opportunity to stand and preach to us. But thus says the Lord. The Bible declares that the husband may follow. He must be first part of his own fruit. I must believe that I'm preaching in order to preach it to you all. I must be an example of the message that we are preaching. Amen. For God expects all of us to live a life that's worthy of pleasing unto Him. That's what I'm saying. None of us can do these things except God be with us. And if it were my choice, I would be doing it. I'm like the prophet Amos. He said, my daddy wasn't a shepherd. You know, he was not a prophet. He said, the Lord laid his hands upon me. He had his best for us to do what God has called us to do. A man for seven years to keep him preaching. But God will catch up with you. So for that case, I thank God he's going to be worthy. And it pleased me into the ministry. Amen. Now I'm not y'all preach, I'm God's preach. Right. I want those that love to follow Jesus. And if you follow Jesus, then it will become easy to follow the message that the Lord has given to us to preach for this time. Amen. Pray with us. Before we live in a normal society now, there's a whole lot of sickness going on. But God is a yeah. do more and above that than we need to imagine or even think. Because he's a God of all power. Yeah. Yeah. In the book of Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, We'll read verse 1 through verse 3 for consideration of the Lord's message to the people of God today. Now, if there be anyone here that don't know him, it is a good opportunity to get to know him in the power of his resurrection. Don't fool yourself. You can know from Genesis to Revelation and still be lost. But you know is who you know. Ephesians <laughs> chapter 2, you able to stand up for a few minutes, a few seconds to us stand in the reading of God's inspired truth. Verse 1 to 3, Ephesians 2. Read this song. And you have he put who were dead in trespasses. And see, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desire of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature, as Adam nature, the children of wrath, even as others. Amen. May God bless you. May God continue to God. Once again, thank God for 
his son Jesus. Thank God for Pastor Brown who has permitted us to stand in the spirit today. Thank God for big brother Moses Wilson. Still rejoicing up the message he preached. And you don't need to encourage one another. You know, as well as Pastor Brown and I never preach, we need to encourage each other in the Lord. None of us. We're partners in this work together. Yes. And Chris was asking from first Corinthians, who is Paul? Who is Apollos? Huh? Who is Cephas? Huh? Other than ministers whom by you believe. Huh? So one planets, another waters, but it is God that gives the increase. Salvation in the preaching. And the same salvation that you receive is the one that we have to receive. Amen. For God is good. The word of God says, among whom also, not some of us, we all had our conversation. In time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our minds, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as of subject for his occasion is being and now. All right, that's all right. That's all right. Then. And now, can you imagine if you took your garments to the dry cleaners and they claim to be Mr. Spot Knots? There's a spot that they cannot remove. And when you pick your garments up, the spot is worse huh, than it was when you took it. Can you imagine if you took your vehicle to the auto body shop to receive a paint job and when you pick your vehicle up, it looks no different than it was when you took it there. You have a problem with that one. Can you imagine going to a specialist, one that specializes in what or he specializes in, and when you visit them, the condition worsens. You have a problem. Do we ever think about it like that in our Christian life? Do we ever think about? The condition we were in before our conversion. And some of us are not very far all right, all right. along the road now that we were. Paul penned his letter to the church at Ephesus. To give them a reminder of the condition that exists in them at their natural birth. Then and now. But not so much that they should stay focused on the then, but they also realize the blessed state of the now. In other words, it, it is a mighty sad Christian that they claim to be a converted child of God and still yet and now see God more like the thing. There seems to be no change. But Paul wanted them to know the blessedness of the convergent state that has accomplished in them through the power of Jesus Christ. Yes. 
29. Those he folded, huh? He called. Those he called, he justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. And a whole lot of us try to use the, the, the scripture of predetermination as an excuse. Now the witness. Say, well, God has all full knowledge, and he knows everyone who's going to be saved, then why do we need to preach the gospel? Because God knows who you are, but you don't know. <laughs> Paul wanted to remind them of the transformation that God has made in their lives. Until you know who you are, you're not going to be in the air that you want to. A tadpole. Huh? He turned into a frog sooner or later. A caterpillar turned into a butterfly sooner or later. So later we're going to be holy. Because he is holy. What are we waiting for the transformation? Thank you. 
spirit being, right? You know a spirit don't have a body, do you? But he, he's able and capable of occupying a body if the door is open. Yeah, he's his whole thing here. Oh, he's in his hand. A spirit don't have a body. Then like God is a spirit. He don't have a body, but he can get inside somebody. That's why he was able to get inside Mary and make himself a body. We get to do pretty good. We 
try to take credit. Mm -hmm. Paul to let them know is not one of us can brag about our new condition. Mm -hmm. huh? We have nothing at all to do with our own condition, but we have everything to do with the now. Yeah. Adam brought the old, the evil. But in Christ Jesus, the same man Adam, and now we have everything to do with it. In other words, we have to make up our mind. See? Among whom also we had our conducts in time past, doing what? The lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, saying whatever comes to your mind, giving folks a piece of your mind, dropping it like it's hot. <laughs> Anyone else coming along? 
that we receive that same man of grace through faith. Look at verse 6. Verse 6, it has raised us up. All sin had us bowed down. And raised us up together. Huh? In other words, Paul won't be Jews, you know, stay deep and foot on the ground. Huh? In Christ, the same faith that weighed the Gentiles away every Jew. In other words, Christ brings folk together, not divide them. Even Jews and Gentiles alike were both under the wrath of God. It wasn't nothing special about a Jew, nothing special about a Gentile. For they both need God's help. That raised us up together and made us to sit in heavenly places where in Christ Jesus, where he sits on the right hand of the Lord. A believer or a saint. I'm just glad that I got a seat in the kingdom. Stop fighting over these seats here. These seats are material. But I'm glad that I got a seat. In other words, this is our glorification state. This is our future event, but it's good as it already. In other words, this is our position in heaven while we're here on earth. In other words, this is our eternal state. So why you gotta wait to see if you sit it? Huh? In Christ Jesus, you're already positioned in heaven. Verse 7. That in the ages to come. Huh? They believe all the baby say, come on, Lord Jesus. There's a great event happening when he comes. That in the age to come. He might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. In other words, you ain't seen nothing yet. He's already shown his grace, his kindness. That's why the Bible the eyes have not seen. The ears have not heard. Neither has been entered into the hearts of men with things God has in store for them. That love him. Do you love him? God has so much. Have you put it on a night of war on He has a time coming where he will show us more and more of who he is. And now, verse 8 saying, For my grace, God's undeserved favor on us, are ye saved? That means your salvation is complete, not saved, you're saved. You're saved and you're being saved. Your salvation is complete, but now he's trying to save you from you. Save me from me. Save me from the chaos of this world. In other words, you are saved, but it's still sanctification in our life that must take place. And none of us all we ought to be. But we all we need to be in Christ. Who is the hope of glory? We're say by grace. Are you saved through what? Faith. Now you might want to take credit for that faith, don't you? Paul said in Romans 12, verse 1 through 3. So with this I say, through the grace that is given to me, to every man that is among you, not to think more highly of yourself, then you ought to but think soberly. It's a whole lot of drunk folks. According to God has dealt to every man the measure. The measure of faith need enough faith to receive salvation. Huh? But now that faith or a truth in that. Yeah. 
So even though I emphasize my faith in him, it's not my own faith. The only faith we have is human faith. But when Christ comes in our life, then he creates in a godly faith. In other words, we can trust in the unseen God. But with human faith, the only thing you can trust in is human ability. I'm glad God is superhuman. What we can even think. Yes. They would say, for my grace, yes. are you saved through faith? Yes. And that not of yourselves. Yes. In other words, you don't have any bragging rights. Yes. See, folk like to brag on what they do. Yes. Every time those Pharisees would oppose Jesus, they always was at to the what must I do? Yes. That I might work the works of God. Jesus said to John 20, 6, 20, 8, 29, so this is the work of God. Not works, but work. Say that you believe on him whom you see. And that's the only work of faith you need for salvation. And then after that, the faith in him will produce action of works. In other words, works doesn't save us. The work is the evidence of a saved child of God. But we said that it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You know man is a boastful creature. Man brag about everything. Make you find out the whole world and you don't have to make him find out. Man a brain is my nature. Did you hear me pray today, preacher? Did you hear did, did y'all hear that message? Man is a brag of don't you? He's prideful in his arrogance. But I'm glad. God got this salvation fixed. When not one individual will be able to say, then I did that. We have to say it was him then and it was him now. There's any man that go from woman, boy, or girl. I don't care how good you think you are. I don't care where you go or where you don't go. You won't be able to take credit for salvation. It is by grace. God will not deserve favor that sets us free from the trespasses and the sin that had us bound thee. And it's that same grace of God that will help us to continue to live out that salvation now. It was him then, and it's him now. Look what he says in verse 10. He says, For we are his workmanship. That word means a master. Peace. The church is God's pearls. In other words, a masterpiece takes careful uh, time of putting this masterpiece together. And you don't get a masterpiece and master that piece overnight. So you look at the making of all of God's creation. The Bible says God just spoke things into existence. But when it came down to making hard-headed men who God sees as his masterpiece, God called together the Trinitarian. He said in Genesis 1 and 26, let us make men. In other words, Mankind is a Trinitarian. He's made of a body, mind, and spirit. He's been created in the spiritual image of who God is because God is a spirit. And we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works that God had full approval 
or the mountains of old pain, that we shall feel in you. In other words, God, back then, had a plan. For then, he had a plan for now. In other words, the uniqueness of God through the creation of mankind, making of a masterpiece of his church. He loved the church so much that he died for the church. But my question is to us today, do we love God? Do we love him for what he thought of us? Even when we were lost without a savior. Look at Jesus back in the full knowledge of his own mind. Created a man named Adam from the dust of the ground, placed a man to go to be. Yet knowing that Adam would mess up. And in the perfect plan of God, he already had a way out. Covering his whole father and people with animal skin as a temporary covering until the coming of Jesus. And then later on, at the age of the coming, the Bible says, when the fullness of time had came, Jesus, being born of a woman, born of a virgin, born under the law, came down to redeem mankind. I want to tell you the thing, my brothers and my sisters. I don't know about you, but back then, I was lost. But now, I'm fine. Peace of life, but now 
Yeah. Not an ought to save you. Yeah. But I'm sure yeah. you've never surrendered your life to Christ. Yeah. And then perhaps you came up and did it your hand, but still haven't turned your life over to the Lord. Yeah. Now would be a fine opportunity yeah. for you to do it right. Amen. Remember who you were. And remember you didn't clean yourself up to the sin. God cleaned us up. So if you're here today, you can come right now. And God will. I will be a that God will change your life. Amen. God will change your life. You say he was a head, but now he's a love. That's what God will do today. That's what God will do today. Amen. So if you're here today, Jesus will fix it. Fix it for you. Sister, I'm going to be up front for those who want to COVID-19 shot. 